Joseph, he was up for Joseph Gordon. Every movie he was up for yeah. as well. Um, JGL. Yeah, him. Uh, who's really a terrible actor but seems to be in bloody everything recently. Mm. Um, so, yeah, so we know he's up for... But I, I think this is a Dundee. Ruth, Paul Rudd. Do you like Paul Rudd? Do you know who Paul Rudd is? Am I putting, yeah, oh, right. No, that's not what I meant. I mean, do you like him as an actor? Yes, yes, Behave yourself. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, I think he'd be a great actor. Yeah, no, I think he would. Like, I I was actually, like, the, like whenever his name was first mentioned, I was mm-hmm. like, <gasps> yes, please. Yes. Because you've even described him as a modern-day Bill Murray. Potentially the, mar- the, the, yeah. the, the modern-day Bill Murray, yes. Because he has that, that kind of deadpan, <coughs> you know, very yeah. funny, especially but, in role models. Yes, that, you but know. he's the most unique every man yes. there could ever be. Yes, that's, Again, that's good, yeah. Again, very much like Bill Murray. Yeah. You know, so you could imagine him being Ant Man. You can imagine him being a superhero, much in the way that Bill Murray was Peter Venkman. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. But see, the most unique I, every man. I want him in Ghostbusters three. What Paul Rudd? Yes, I want him in Ghostbusters three. I want 3. him and Jason Bateman. Mm. I have a confession to make. Oh, another one. Right, I have a confession to make. I watched that movie Identity Thief at the weekend. Identity Thief. Another one with Paul Bateman and um, Paul Bateman. Uh, isn't it Paul? Jason, Jason Bateman. Bateman? Sorry, Jason. Yeah. Bateman. And um, yeah, what do you call another the big girl? I oh right. Oh. Oh, look, here's the thing. Right. Um, no, hang on. I'll, I'll. No, forget it. What, right. Sorry, what? The movie got an awful panning. Right. Yes, Everybody it said did. It's not terrible. It's not terrible. It's actually quite funny. But then maybe my expectations were lowered. What are you doing? Fixing my sleeves. There's a lot of written about going on there. Um, <laughs> Ruth, careful now. Yeah, and it, it's a real. It's actually quite good. I quite like it. Jenny. Mc, no, not, not Jenny McCarthy. Jenny, Mc, McCarthy. Jennifer McCarthy. Jennifer McCarthy. God, she shares her name but with Jenny you know, McCarthy. The, the trailer for it always made me just feel that. Uh, the Melissa McCarthy. McCarthy. Yeah, it was just kind of like. Yeah, well, it kind of is, yeah, but it, it's so funny. If, I liked it. If I can watch the trailer, I've not missed anything. No, that's, you've pretty much seen the whole movie. But well, that's I not like, true of I every like Jason, movie these I like days. Jason Bateman. I, like, I really like Jason Bateman. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, so I, I, yeah, so that wasn't so bad. But okay, so uh, apparently, right? Um, blah, 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 where was it? Yeah, t- t- Edgar Wright. Edgar Wright's directing that man. He is indeed, know, yes. Who, of course, uh, has made all the movies with Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, the, yeah. the Cornetto trilogy. He Shaun the Dead, Hot Fuzz, World's End. Yes, yeah. um, and, you know... I, I love Edgar Wright. I think the idea of him directing... I mean, you, have you seen the little teaser bit of footage that he did? I have, yes. Man? It's class. It, it's amazing, yeah. It's class. Because I was always thinking, how are they going to make Ant-Man exciting? How are they going to make that mm. interesting? In those 30 seconds of footage, he yeah. made it interesting. Because he's tiny, he runs up the barrel of a gun, Yeah, he becomes massive and kicks a guy in the face. Yeah, and then becomes tiny. And it's class. Okay, so I really like this. brilliant. But, but right, okay. Um, Wright's original plans for film involved Hank Pym, who is the original Ant-Man, and the later Ant-Man of the comics, Scott Lang, who both appear in the film. Do you think they're going to do that? I don't know. Would that be a good idea? I don't know. You see, they've already messed with Hank Pym, because Hank Pym was, of course, the one who created Ultron. Ultron, yeah. But now Ultron's going to happen before Hank Pym's going to be interested, so obviously mm. Ultron's going to be more Tony Stark's creation well, in I the think Marvel movie version. It's safe to say, from all the clues we've got so far, Tony Stark creates Ultron. Yes, yeah. accidentally. Yeah. Um, so, whether or not that's going to happen, so there's still plenty to... Now, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, we'll talk a bit more about him later on the show. He, <laughs> Do we have to? I know, I know, but he was in the run for it, but now he, it's unlikely he will because of another mm. movie that he's going to be making, which we'll talk about later on. Yeah. Um, now, Janet Van Dyne uh, is apparently going to be the Wasp. Was she not the girl in... She wasn't in Iron Man 3, so she wasn't... She didn't play the... You know, the... the, the the assassin that tried to kill Janet him Van Dyne. Yeah, Janet Van Dyne is Wasp. She's the character's name. Oh, sorry. Yes, no. Um, Res- uh, Rashida, Rashida Jones. Jones. Sorry, Rashida Jones. Sorry. Yeah. Slip up there. Uh, was she not? The, is she not the one that was in Iron Man, Iron Man 3? Three? You mean the the French uh, Xmas chick? Yeah. No, that's not her. That is. Uh, I should really remember her name, but I can't at this current moment. Okay, time. but do you remember she was meant to be the Wasp? Whenever she was cast in that, everybody was like, and she looked Thought that she was she the Wasp. Perfect yeah. for the Wasp. Yeah. Um. So no, right, no, that's not her. That's not her. Okay, so... I don't recognise the name, Rashida Jones. Now, another name that's been attached to this role is, of course, Simon Pegg. Because Simon Pegg put the photograph on Twitter... Uh, what, what, for Wasp? For, yeah, for, for Ant-Man uh, with Simon Pegg. Because he, he put yeah. the picture on Twitter not too long ago of him standing pointing at a picture of Ant-Man on a, on a Marvel Studios poster. Yeah. And everybody was like, oh, why is he pointing at that? Although he said the reason he did it was because his best friend Edgar Wright was making it's out that movie. Ant-Man, and he's yeah. just, so, you know, potentially... I, you know, here's the thing I'm kind of sick of Simon Pegg mm. I like him but I've seen enough of him yeah it's a, it's a bit overkill yeah you know because I mean he's he's in Star Trek yes well done I know fair enough and he's going to be in Star Wars let's be honest he will be in Star you Wars you reckon so yes because he's a huge Star Wars fan See, I he's hate a big that J. idea I, I, as you say I hate the idea of the crossover thing because they're talking about Benedict Cumberbatch for episode 7 yeah. and I don't know if, if Simon Pegg is going to be in the new Star Wars trilogy yeah. 
Maybe a cameo. Yeah. You know, don't make him a, a Jedi or something that shows up. Or one of the gay droids from Star Wars. <laughs> something, you know, something like that. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Paul Rudd as Ant-Man. I, is it a done deal? Do we think it's a done deal? I really hope so. I really... And do you know what? Disney like to play things very close to the chest, you know? So, I, I, I don't know. Because I th- I think he is Ant-Man. And obviously, uh, Variety, was it? Yeah, Variety got the... Uh, got the heads up that he'd got the role so Disney are saying no no he's in negotiations they're not saying yes they're not saying no they're saying he is involved in some capacity which naturally is a whole bag of corporate lies and of course he is yeah he's Ant-Man okay done deal right um, Dave yeah. Paul Rudd is Ant-Man what do you think alright fair enough moving right, on, moving on. Um, right <laughs> Don Cheadle set for Avengers 2 yeah the sequel Right, now, what's happening here with Don Cheadle? Obviously, he is Iron Patriot or War Machine or whatever He's you want to call it. He's War Machine. Um, uh, so, we, the, the talk is now he's going to be back for um, Avengers 2. Hitflix can confirm that Colonel Rhodes, a.k.a. War Machine, has a key role in the conflict with Ultron uh, and the main focus of the sequel. Now, yeah. th- did I dream this? Or was it somewhere it. along the lines that we sort of knew this was going to happen because War Machine isn't part of... Right, spoiler alert, and again, this is our speculation, but the idea is that we think... Ultron is ultimately Jarvis. Yeah. Like a like a corrupted power hungry version of Jarvis. Yes. Um which means Iron Man can't fight him because Jarvis controls well, the suit. can control the suit. Yeah. Whereas Iron Monger exists Iron Patriot. I, or Iron, Iron Patriot or War, Machine. War Machine, whatever you want to call it. War Machine. Exists I say where are you going with those sandwiches? Speechy. No, not a chance. Oh over here. Do you Hang want, on, do wait, wait, great? wait, is that Kozla? I'm gonna do a Jerry Ran here and eat on her. Yeah. Do you know what's great? Do you know what makes for great radio? People Ooh. eating and drinking on air. Yeah. Do you want to? Do you want to? Right, you ready? Right, right, you ready? Right. Good stuff. Okay, so right. <laughs> right, so, okay. What, is, so what, the, are, what are in these? Well, I didn't make them, but there's tuna. Where is tuna? This is unbelievable radio right, right now, guys. Okay, I'll take some tuna. There we go. This there we go. The kitchen tuna. <laughs> 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 so this could make sense, right? This obviously yeah. would make sense that John Cheadle is back. That John, John, John Cheadle, John Cheadle, uh, John Cheadle is going to be back. <laughs> um, now, is he is he the new Iron Man? Well, you see, in the comics for a while, Tony went a bit mental. Mm-hmm. Essentially, is what that boils down to. So Rhodey had to take on the Iron Man mantle. So he was Iron Man for a while. So uh, I don't know how that would play into Avengers Two because obviously Tony Stark's quit. At yes. the end of Iron Man 3. Spoilers, but you know what? You've had since April to see the movie. I don't care anymore. Um, <laughs> yeah, so basically by the end of Iron Man 3, Tony's quit. Yeah. So obviously somebody needs to take on the role of the armoured hero. Mm-hmm. The armoured Avenger. So obviously, because Rhodey is the Iron Patriot, he works for the government, the government have been like, right, okay, well, we don't have Stark on our side anymore, which is both a blessing and a curse. Rhodey, get out there. Get mm-hmm. it sorted. So obviously he's going to have a, a higher involvement in even the Avengers universe. Yeah. Because obviously they need the tech guy and obviously uh, Rhodey is going to have to fill that void. You see, that makes sense from a story point of view. But are people going, I like Don Cheadle and I liked him in the Iron Man, in Iron Man 3 especially. I thought he was really good. Yeah. But he's no Robert Downey Jr. No, he's really not. Do you know, and are but, people but, going to accept that? No, but Downey Jr. is in mm-hmm. Avengers 2 anyway. I know, but let's be honest, Downey Jr. is going to get to a point where he's not going to want to do these movies anymore. Yeah. So, are they going to recast him? Are they going to just sort no, they're, of they're write gonna, him out of the story? No, they're going to recast him. <clears throat> you think so? Yeah, because there's been talk for ages now of people like James Franco and stuff taking on the role, and you know it's an absolute nightmare. But yeah, Marvel have said that they want to do like a James Bond type of thing with all of their heroes. Mm-hmm. So, like, say Chris Hemsworth says he doesn't want to be Thor anymore, you know they'll recast him. If uh, look at or Chris Evans doesn't want to be Captain America anymore, they'll bring in a new guy for it. So right. it is one of those things where the continuity will continue, but the actor will change. Oh, fair enough. Okay, right. Now, the big news this week. Have we all seen the new um, Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man 2 Oh, 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 have oh, oh no? of course we have. No? Ruth, come on. You've had two weeks. You still haven't seen it. Not that fast. Oh, Ruth, you're missing out. You can tell you haven't seen it. You int- yeah, Mark, well, Mark, talk to the woman. Mark, talk to the woman. Shocking. Talk Shocking. to the woman. Right, well, the trailer came out a couple weeks ago and it was really, really good. Then they released an international version of it, which was even better. Yeah, because it's got like like <clears throat> over a minute and a half worth of new footage. Yeah, you better go. Yeah, you better run, Ruth. You better go. Take your sandwiches with you. <laughs> okay, like, so on. this is big See news, right? Cheers. In a move to forge <laughs> a new legacy in the story of Peter Parker on screen, Sony Pictures Entertainment announced that they will, in association with Marvel Entertainment, develop several new projects in the Spider-Man franchise. Right, look, here's the thing. Yeah. 
X Men's doing it because they announced the Age of Apocalypse last last couple weeks ago. Um, you know, yes, they did. they're going to do it with Fantastic Four. They're now they're doing it with Spider Man. Is there going to be too many universes, comic book universes, and movies? Yeah, see, that's the trouble because for a while there, they said that because obviously Marvel's got its big universe now with the Iron Man movies and so forth, the the Avengers universe, and they were talking for a while of maybe striking up a deal with Sony to get Spider Man involved in that universe. Mm-hmm. So obviously now they've got this whole big world builder. Uh, over at Sony with the Amazing Spider-Man and its franchises and its sequels, you know that's going to be so much of a clash now, because obviously, yeah. like we've got X-Men over at Fox and they're obviously doing the whole Days of Future Past thing and that's going to spin off into other future movies. So yeah, I think it's 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 really a case of overkill yet again. I think it is. I think it's too much. Um, but anyway, okay. So they're right. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Right. The studio has assembled a kind of Spider-Man brain trust to bring this vision to reality with Alex Kurtman, Robert Orky or Orsi. Orky, Orsi. Orsi. Sorry, that's me. <laughs> I'm driving home for Christmas. Right, seriously? Seriously? <laughs> oh, God! What's happened to my phone? Right, seriously? You better stop it. There you go. That's a good lad. Right. Sorry about that. Yeah. Well, we hit the interrupt. Not at all, <laughs> not at all. Right, um, so the development of Brainstorms with um, Alex Kurtz, Rob Orsi, Jeff Pinkner, Ed Solomon, Drew Goddard, all set to work on new films as well as writing The Amazing Spider-Man 3. Do you know uh, Ed Solomon actually worked on uh, the Bill and Ted movies? Right. And how I know that is that in Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, there's a bad guy called Denomalos, which is yes. Ed Solomon spelled backwards. Oh, I didn't know that. Denomalos, uh, yeah. Denomalos, yeah, because he was brilliant. He's a Ed Solomon, guy. yeah. All right, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, okay, right, Point now... Pointless trivia for you fact fans. <coughs> okay, um, for 20... Right, Kurtzman and Norsi will team up with Solomon to write the screenplay for Venom. Okay. Okay, uh, which Kurtzman will also direct. Goddard will then pick up the strands of the various villains introduced in the main series to write the script for The Sinister Six, which he is also slated to direct, focusing on the villains in the franchise. Now, does this mean we're not going to get The Sinister Six in the main Spider-Man movies, even we're, though we're probably going to get all the characters? Yeah, we're going to get the beginnings <coughs> of them. And then right. maybe at the end of Amazing Spider-Man 3... You know, we'll have an after credit scene okay. where they all get together and go, look, we've had our ass handed to us by Spider-Man. Yeah. You know, want to form, a, form a team, team. take yeah. him down. Okay. Yeah. Um, right. Commenting on the announcement, Doug Belgrad, president of Columbia Pictures, says Spider-Man is one of our studio's greatest assets. We're thrilled with the creative team we've assembled to delve more deeply into the world that Mark, Avi and Matt have begun to explore in The Amazing Spider-Man and The Amazing Spider-Man 2. We believe that Mark, Alex and Drew have uniquely exciting visions for how to expand the Spider-Man universe in each of the upcoming films. So, right, that so, sounds okay, like so a fantastic bit of corporate blurb. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, anyway. since he is a corporate blurb person. <laughs> Indeed um, he is. Yeah, so we're going to get a Sinister Six movie. Well, that's good. Yeah, or I movies. That's, that's, that's really good. Movies. Yeah, because we've, we've obviously we've got confirmation of four Spider-Man movies, which was the one that came out last year, the one that's due out next year, uh, Amazing Spider-Man 3, and then a fourth one, mm-hmm. which is currently untitled, which I genuinely think will be a Sinister Six movie. Yeah. And... Um, or the Sinister Andrew Six. Andrew Garfield movie. has said that so far he doesn't even know if he's involved in the fourth one yet. Which he is. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, I would of course say so. he is. Right, okay, let's move on. This is uh, Shane 102.4 FM and you are following the nerd. I'm Mark. He's Mark? He's Dave. Alrighty. Um, I'm Saxon as well. And this is the following the nerd. End of year. Yes, you're Saxon. We all know you're Saxon. Who could not know that voice? Um, I don't know, deaf people? Nice. Um, yeah, so you can get us on Facebook at any time. <laughs> At facebook.com forward slash following the nerd. Uh, you can tweet us at nerd following. And if you're listening live right now and only during the live show, you can tweet it. You can text us on 079 252 Hi, this is Ashley Eckstein, voice of Ahsoka Tano on Star Wars The Clone Wars, and I follow the nerd. It smells like carrots, but then he reminded him that snowmen can't talk, and he's obviously mental. Okay, um, right. This is Shemo Two Point Four FM, and Saxon's going off the deep end. Can you blame me? It's one of those nights we've got people coming into the studio, yes. distracting us, uh, giving us sandwiches, and it's Christmas. It's Christmas. It's Christmas. This time next week, it's all over. Boxing this is day. as far away as it ever was. Indeed. Bah humbug. Right. Um, okay. This this has been a new story you can tell us about. Oh, well, can I tell okay. us about this? Now, this is I? the Doctor Who new. Doctor Who? Doctor Who? Doctor Who? Doctor Colour Who? He used to look after me at one time. Doctor Who? Yeah, anyway, he's a friend of my dad's. Um, yes, uh, Christopher Eccleston, of course, didn't 
Return for the Day of the Doctor. How dare he, the swine! But if he had have, Stephen Moffat has been talking about if he had have come back, what his role would have been. Tell us. Yes, apparently he would have taken on the role of the War Doctor. Which makes sense. Allegedly taken on the role of the War Doctor because Stephen Moffat came out and said that had Eccleston decided to return, he would have been the one to end the time war. He would have taken.